call the meeting to order. Thank you guys for coming out. Um, it's, it's completely in the right order. Andrew, you want to call roll? We don't have to call roll. There's new rules for the new rules. Uh, has everyone had a chance to review the minutes? Anybody have any comments, questions, uh, motions? I motion we accept the minutes as submitted. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Staff report on recent council meetings. Good evening, commissioners. We're going to quickly run through the staff update as well as the uh, town council update here. We've combined the two to eliminate any confusion moving forward on the agenda items. Good idea. Yeah, look, always, you know, trying to innovate here at the planning department. Uh, so first of all, town council and other updates. Uh, on Tuesday, the land use plan was finally approved. Uh, long, hard work of both the steering committee and you all to make sure that everything was looked at in close detail and that no one was left out of the discussion, which is a good thing, uh, even if it is tiring at some times. But we have a formalized plan that was put back to one more big public meeting and then council came back and approved it. And that will move on to the Division of Coastal Management for their approval, I believe, in November. Was it approved per our recommendation or were there any changes? I believe they already accepted your recommendations back from the, you mean from? Right, but they had one more meeting, so I didn't know if anything changed. No, I don't believe any substantial yeah, it, it, There was just one small tweak about a, um, a, a line that was going through a property on Hamlet Avenue in the corner of Lake Park and Hamlet Avenue as part of pedestrian access. By the Marriott, yes. Yeah, and the owner Hopefully just wanted it to be offset from his property, so we just made that change. Okay. Right. But that was it. Other than that, uh, all your <laughs> recommendations were uh, were approved. Very good. So, m merely good the job. one. Uh, Hidden Hills Phase Two, which you all saw in August, was approved, um, as well as they had a speed limit change on Dow and Ocean. Dow dropping down to 45 miles an hour from 55, and Ocean dropping down from 45 to 35 for the whole little stretch there after the the uh, pedestrian crossing. We've also uh, approved a town sign, uh, Welcome to Carolina Beach, Carolina's Playground, as well as just an update, the uh, Mermaid Manor, 308 Carolina Beach Avenue North, has finally finished all of their camera processing. The demolition will be starting sometime soon, and they have applied officially for a multi-mixed-use uh, uh, construction there. Where's this town sign? It will be, uh, you know, our, out in front where it'll be north of the ATM machine, uh, in that little this little grass area between the town parking lot and the church driveway. Near where, like, I guess it's not a bus Close stop to the area. Bus stop. Close yes. To the bus stop. Current, yeah. In that approximately in that area. Is that what it's going to look like? Uh, I think, and then they'll probably have some. I think they're going to add some color to the. That's what I was asking. Yeah. Okay. I am not the artist. Is my understanding. So, the town said that we'll we'll give it a shot and see what it looks like and see what kind of feedback we get and see if we want it to stay or change or just how we want to move forward. Uh, we'll also add that uh, council uh, did make committee appointments uh, townwide and the um, appointed two new members will be having. They'll start in October. It was Ethan Crouch and Todd Piper, and I would like to thank uh, Commissioner. Hoffer and Chairman Blumendahl for your years of service uh, to you. the board. It's been a pleasure. We're all very grateful for y'all's continued efforts, even though I think the two of you just argued with one another most of the time. But <laughs> <laughs> well, it wouldn't be right if we were all just thinking the same way. No, we it, it was a wonderful having all of you, and uh, especially being my you know part of the original people that I started off with here. I'll be sad to see you go. How long have you been here, Miles? I'll be three years in October. Starting to feel old. <laughs> All right, moving on. We have uh, permitting over the last month or so. We've had 24 new permits uh, for just the renovation, repair, grading, additions, and fences. We've had seven residential new constructions come in, and Daryl has been busy COing at least five. I feel like he's probably failed about 15 from how often he's revisiting job sites, but uh, he's been very busy. Code enforcement as well. Um, on top of it, this past month, 13 complaints received and 12 resolved. So Joe's really been uh, in a groove, apparently, or or he's been a little less busy, one or the other. 
um, we have six demolitions actively going on, or a couple little preemptive, but uh, as you can see there, we have two action shots from both 906 Canal and 109 Cape Fear, and then we have four others which are in the process or will be coming down shortly. We're still waiting to see what happens with 1213 Canal. They're still in the major permitting process for CAMA regarding the stormwater outfall there. No timeline on it, but it is supposed to be coming down. And uh, 906 Canal is actually going to be a house relocation. One of the homes, are sort of catty corner across the street, is going to shift over and go up on pilings a little bit higher to uh, avoid flooding issues. And then uh, I know that 109 Cape Fear is uh, getting a lot of attention, but uh, life safety issues, so that structure is coming down, and it will be, someone will come back with something hopefully, you know, exciting for the boardwalk area of the Carolina Beach there. St. Joseph is gone. St. Joseph is gone? It was gone this morning when I drove by. Ugh, well, we, we missed that action shot, unfortunately. <laughs> I should have got one for you. Yeah, anytime y'all see something <laughs> that, you know, you know, staff might not have, please let us know. Uh, we have three new businesses, two very new, Beach Vibe Create and Marshall's Locksmith Service are going in together at St. Joseph 801 there. And then the Cross-Eyed Crab is finally finishing up with their renovations uh, from the building inspector. So they, they should be uh, opening fairly soon. They're open. Is that the vet's office? It is. Former vet's what's office. A, what's a Beach Vibe something? Create Works? I believe they're doing t-shirts. Huh. Yeah, they're doing small batch designs, things of that nature. Hmm. Cross-Eyed Crab is open. They are open? All yeah, right. I've been there. It's pretty good. Well, there you go. we got reviews to go along with it. Yep. <laughs> Coming up for you all, we are still hopefully going to see the eight-unit plan unit development, which was uh, in TRC back in July, I believe. They had a little bit of uh, design modifications that they need to do to come in compliance with a landscaping buffer and some other zoning requirements, but they do still plan to place it on that, uh, that Carolina Beach Avenue south lot there, as well as the text amendment for the sign ordinance has been forwarded on out of the zoning department for review, so we're hoping that that'll be coming to you. It may not be October, but it is uh, moving along. The conditional zoning, which is a part of the 160D update, is hopefully going to be in front of you in October looking at basically it's going to be an elimination of the conditional use permit process and selection of conditional zoning instead which is a new option well, not a new option but an alternative which we can adopt based on 160D standards and we'll be going over that in much greater detail prior to the meeting as well as at the meeting whenever we are looking at any text amendments and then we're also looking at road improvement standards, adopting something formal for some of the street ends and wetlands roads that have never been developed but have people that are now coming in and proposing development. And the town is trying to get away from dealing with each situation independently and giving them a base standard to work from and then moving from there as appropriate. What, what would the um, – well, I won't be here for it, never mind. I was going to ask about the road improvement thing, but I – I can well, we, we also haven't defined it. Yet. Okay. It's going to TRC this month. <laughs> I was thinking about one particular spot where spot lane doesn't go all the way through and just curious what you were talking about, if that well, would be different from either side of it. It, it potentially could be depending upon uh, different communities. Uh, would the different road have to be wider handle there it? than it is you know, yeah. on either side of it? That kind of question is what I was asking. Yeah, and different communities handle it in different manners, and there's also uh, some concern about whether municipalities can mandate the full extent of a road being paved or not and so we're making sure that we are both coming back with something that's consistent with other communities as well as something that is enforceable so that's always Very the good. two goals that we're looking at and that's about it okay check mark <laughs> all right uh do we have anybody sign up for public discussion no. all yeah. right check mark all right Discussion items. Consider a condition use permit to approve the operation of daycare facilities at 105 Dow Road, Seaside Chapel. All right, and I will continue. Before on. we start, are you doing this one? I am. Mr. Mr. Mouse, I have a question. Why, um, and this may be because the state says so, and I just don't know, but why aren't we talking about just letting churches be daycares, period, especially during these times? So during these times is not something we can address because they are state regulated. Um, however, 
from a Carolina Beach perspective, it goes back to the conditional uh, conditional zoning and permit table permissible uses update because our table of permissible uses has been added to substantially over the years, but has never been updated. And there are many, many uses, daycares and child cares included, that as of now are a conditional use. And short of a text amendment, we can't just change that. That was where I was headed. Is and that's one of the things. No, no, we're going to get a rush of ten other churches coming in trying to be do CUPs for daycares when we could just change a text amendment. And that's part of the process. And with the conditional zoning, staff has gone through and taken a hard look at all of the uses and said, all right, in our opinion, what you know needs to remain conditional under the new process or what can go to permit by right and see if there's any ways to loosen it up. We're also looking at making those two unit plan unit developments permit by right so it's not something that you know, it's a reasonable, the same as a townhome, just kind of split. Where and we may lose conditional use permits altogether anyway. Well, conditional use permits to, by default are disappearing. They're going to become special use permits. And then, except That's for extreme, I know it's a little ticky tack, <laughs> but except for extraneous circumstances or very uh, deleterious uses that the town is hoping to keep those strict conditions on, we're going to shift everything else to conditional zoning. So it's, it's kind of 50 50, a little bit more flexibility but still the rigid analysis that you can require a traffic impact study, you can re require uh, landscape buffers, things of that nature. So but that can happen at TRC before it goes to council and not have to come here? Uh, it, depending upon the circumstances. Theoretically. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, so part of that process, just real quickly, we will be evaluating all the uses and saying, okay, which ones do need to have a 90-day review and then which uses can just be permitted by staff and along they go. Okay. That's something we'll be bringing back to uh, planning and zoning, as we mentioned, maybe in October, to see what uses uh, can we streamline. I can't wait to come be in the audience. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead, Miles. I'm sorry. No, you're, you're fine. Questions are welcome. It's always an education process. Um, so we're looking at a conditional use permit this evening, as you mentioned, for a daycare located at Seaside Chapel at 105 Dow Road. For those of you that are unfamiliar, Miles, this is we'll need to um, swear in. We uh, do need oh. to swear in. That is true. Let's Am go I ahead and take care of that. That's what the script's for. Sorry about that. All individuals intending to testify must come forward and be sworn in at this time. Thank you. All right, this time I open the evidentiary hearing. Mr. Murphy can continue. Sorry, I didn't have my cheat sheet out. No worries. I apologize for the false for start that. as well. So as I said, we are looking at a conditional use permit for a daycare to be located at 105 Dow Road for Seaside Chapel. This is a wonderful 2019 aerial view here that you can see of the current facility as well as the fence playground area, which is a proposal as a part of this um, CUP. So daycares are permitted in R3 through, as we said, conditional use. Otherwise, R3 is a single family only district, so that's part of why this was originally placed as a conditional use. But as we discussed, times do change, so we'll see what happens moving forward. But for now, they do need the conditional use permit in order to proceed. The Current conditions, as you can see here, a wonderful view from H Street. On the right is the area roughly where the uh, uh, the fence playground area will be going somewhere in this region here, with the la uh, with the proposed landscape buffering it from H Street. These are the current conditions from the uh, looking from Hamlet, Hamlet towards the buildings. Views taken from the grass parking lot that they utilize there as well as the views from Charlotte. On your left side is the building that is going to be used as the primary daycare location. The, the design here, as I said, they will be utilizing about a two-thirds of the building on the left there, uh, primarily uh, make sure they have kitchen use, bathroom use, and you know area for the children, as well as on the lower design you can see the fence playground area which is intended for that fence playing ground. They have a landscape buffer that they are including, 
there will be drop off and pick off coming off of Charlotte in front of that building as well as ample extra parking in the rear should it be required um, and the this is and just highlight it again the area that's intended for the daycare activities on the interior of that building so staff is requiring additional buffering as you can see here by the green on the edge of the fence playground area this is just to give that a little bit of a um, you know a blocking from everyone on H Street there but all of the other buffering site distances were handled and the original 2005 conditional use permit for the chapel so that's not something really a purview we're just looking at the small improvements here stormwater does not require the parking lot to be finished beyond its current condition um, child care daycare ratios are handled outside of the town uh, that's something state regulated and no additional improvements were required or requested from technical review committee In regards to the specific standards, ingress and egress will remain via Charlotte. The design accommodates two-way traffic and sufficient parking, and as I said, extra is available. Parking is contained on the property. Trash collection will not change. Utility collection, utility pro provision will not change. Landscape buffer is being required on the H Street side of the proposed fenced playground area. Signage is proposed at this time, and all signage will have to meet standard zoning requirements for approval. Um, and there is no substantial change to any required yards or open space. The general conditions, the density falls within the standard R3 requirements as well as it meets the setbacks. The proposed CUP meets all other conditions and specifications. The proposed structures will and use will conform with the neighboring properties as it is located on its own parcel as a church which operating the daycare. Um, and the future land use is primarily for single family, but as we said, this is uh, a conditional use permit to allow, you know, that, that has been uh, to allow daycares in the past on in these R3 zones. So the big prohibition in the R3, uh, residential three land use plan is the multifamily. That's what the concern was. And staff recommends the approval of the proposed conditional use permit for the operation of a daycare service at 105 Dow Road, Seaside Chapel, with the addition of that landscaping buffer. All right. Thank you, Miles. Yes, sir. Uh, if the applicant is present and would like to present any evidence or his representation, legal arguments in support of the requested at that time. Mr. Barnes, surprise. Sure. Please state your name and address for the record. I shall. Ned Barnes, 814 County County North, Chairman, Commissioners. Um, I've been here 35 years, and as far as I know, the church has been here as long as I've been here, if not longer. Um, but I think we all recognize the fact with what we're going through now with COVID, uh, and, and the other factor I was thinking of when I looked at this application is, and uh, we found uh, in our real estate practice, so many younger families are moving to the beach than they, they, they ever have before, and the need for daycare is, is just exorbitant here on the island. Um, what they're looking at, again, is, is just putting in a fence, a 50 by 50 fence to, for the children, which is going to be required and also meets the state requirements. Uh, if you look at their business plan, they're going to meet or exceed all the state requirements for a child daycare center. Um, and as Miles correctly pointed out, we think there's no issue at all with the seven specific ingress, egress remains the same, parking remains the same, there's no need at all for any additional all street parking, refuse doesn't change, utilities don't, won't change. Uh, screening buffering will be the same, but for their willingness to comply with the buffering that the TRC and the staff has recommended, uh, the signage, there will be no additional signage other than what's there with the, uh, with the church as it exists currently. Uh, and again, the yard and the open space will be the same, but for the fact that they'll be installing the 50 by 50 foot fence again, which is going to be required by, by the state for the facility. Um, as far as the general condition, uh, it certainly won't endanger in any way the health or safety of the public. Uh, it currently meets all required conditional uh, conditions and uh, specifications as a general condition, and we certainly don't think it will impair any of the value of joining properties. As I say, the church has been there for many, many, many years, uh, and it will be <coughs> in harmony with the area. Again, the church has been there for 30-some-odd years. So I'll request that. Be Thank you. Chairman Pestis. Um I have a question for you, Mr. Barnes. Sure. Did they Have they stated hours yet? Right now, they're looking at from 2 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Um, okay. Full day. 
Mr. Barnes, could you repeat that just so? Yes. Just for the record. They're planning on two to six during the normal school days, but they they are able to, to handle children or have children at the facility when it's a if it's a teacher's work day or a holiday that uh, they will have uh, can can handle children there the entire day. Anyone else on the board have questions for Mr. Barnes? Just one, Mr. Barnes, and if uh, she has to answer or one of the witnesses, then I, I can wait for the answer, and it won't affect my vote. I'm just wondering what the capacity will be out of uh, curiosity. We're going to do it with just 25. Yeah, 25. See, can we get it on mic? Yeah, just 25. I said it's, it. So the minutes can get it. Yeah. The applicant well, responded 25. 25. Okay. The answer is 25. I'll referee. And it's Monday through Friday. All right. Anybody else have any questions? Mr. Barnes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, if anybody else has been swearing and would like to say anything else, it's, this is the time to do that. Okay. Uh, make a motion to close, close the public hearing. Second. All right. Discussion among the commission. Anybody have any comments, questions? Any problems with any of the general or specific conditions? I'll start it off. Uh, <clears throat> looks to me like the only difference, because it is a church and it's been there, and the folks are really nice there. They've helped me on several occasions uh, find lost animals. <laughs> but um, the only difference I see <laughs> in practice is what days and what times people will be on the church property. Uh, right. Personally, I think it would be an asset uh, for some of the younger families moving in, uh, as well as you know the. Uh, unusual times we're in and could be in again so I'm I'm in favor of it yeah I, I think we should be talking about a text amendment instead of just one property but that's just me personally um, I'm all for it especially you know as, as Ned said a lot more young families and I'm seeing that as a builder as well a lot more younger families are moving here and there's kids and there's a need so anybody else no, I mean, I support it. I know that it is something that is needed on the island. We do, um, you know, especially with this, even without COVID, the local daycare is usually full. So this would be, you know, an asset. And with the state, I can tell you living in different states and dealing with daycare centers, North Carolina, the state requirements are so strict. I don't see how it would be anything but an asset to the community. My guess is you'll be full pretty quickly. <laughs> Not my guess. All right, um, Mr. Hopper. I have nothing to add. Okay. <laughs> Come on, it's my last meeting. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna uh, go ahead and make a motion that we approve. Uh, can, Commissioner, uh, yeah. before you read Did I miss that, something. Nope, uh, you're fine. But uh, include in the motion the landscape buffer. I neglected it to add it in the line itself. So. Okay. Just uh, as a note there. As long as we speak. approve of that, I will. Yes, sir. I'm just kidding. I'm going to make a motion. We approve the conditional use permit uh, for the operation of a daycare facility at 105 Dow Road, Seaside Chapel, with the condition recommended by TRC for a buffer on the 8th Street side of the fence for the playground. Uh, the the uh, use meets all required conditions and specifications location and character of the use if developed according to the plan as submitted. Motion on the table. I will second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, thank you guys. <clears throat> All right. Check mark. Next item we are considering to amend chapter 40 to section 40-72 and section 40-548 to address floating homes. Yes. And Commissioner, for the record, we we are addressing this in a permissible use update. It's just we couldn't bring the whole thing at once, and we didn't want to piecemeal it. I just wanted it on the record. <laughs> but thank you. All right. Mr. Hardison is presenting. Yes, Chairman, Commissioners. This next item is um, before us because there was a uh, – a structure that, well, I can keep up here. Structure on a barge that <coughs> arrived right before the July 4th weekend. And we did get some complaints about it. 
Uh, staff investigated it uh, to what our current regulations were and our current requirements in our that's addressed in our Harbor Marina ordinance uh, states that under a live aboard uh, the, the town shall continue to prohibit the occupation of public trust waters by floating homes and it does it goes on to says marinas may be allowed for live aboard uh, on vessels located in approved boat slips so you can have live aboards in a uh, marina um, but it says you cannot have a floating home so then it goes okay well what is a floating home so by definition uh, it means a house built on a floating platform without a means of propulsion and that last part is what was giving staff trouble what does that mean without a means of propulsion and why is it in there um, if it just said house built on a floating platform period all right said and done um, in the land use plan it says due to the limited service area of public trust waters for the use of enjoyment um, by the public floating home should not be permitted but then again it goes back and says okay how does Carolina Beach define the floating homes and with the means of propulsion we went out there uh, the vessel was registered with North Carolina Wildlife as a boat and they had two outboard motors and we said can you demonstrate propulsion and it was docked and they left the dock went out to the waterway and came back they're like okay it's registered as a as a boat it has propulsion so we made our determination and said it looks like it meets the the ordinance that's in front of us that the, the town has the um, adjacent properties in Oceana subdivision were the ones that uh, complained you know if you like to you can um, appeal this to the Board of Adjustment and you may have a case here um, but they elected not to and they actually apply for a text limit to change it under the Harbor Marina ordinance and speaking with the town attorney and understanding that when you look at this I mean it looks more like a floating home than it does a boat with I understand that so and a lot of other communities and our town attorney said it really, this really needs to be addressed under zoning because um, that's what really protects um, you know property values and you can regulate uses and you don't you know it's, you don't have to have a essentially you know uh, under a police power where it's just a safety issue um, where it's a zoning it, it can is there's a lot more it can impact on property values and owners and um, characteristics as far as aesthetics and uh, and the, what, what the desire of the community uh, is so there's a lot more at play so that's why it was more appropriate to address it under zoning rather than our uh, Harbor Marina ordinance where it just talks about more safety issues uh, so that brings us here and what um, we believe is the intent um, is to prohibit uh, floating homes and we were wanting to do a, more of a catch-all floating structures where it would address and we don't know if they were going to they told us that they were going to use it as a home but you know what happens if they want to run a retail business out of it or for commercial purposes then does that make is that okay if you prohibit floating homes if it you know tent is just the structure itself and um, so we use floating structures you know whether it's a if it's a floating home or used for commercial purposes it still would be prohibited uh, we also wanted to address what we had a use of water oriented businesses but we didn't have a definition and we weren't ever really sure what the what was meant by water oriented businesses so we tried to define that and permit it by right in the CBD and marina business and what a water oriented business is is a boat that can be rented for off-site use or offers off-site activities from the property uh, examples uh, would be like charter boats boat rentals dive boats uh, dinner cruises a boat taxi those types of um, situation where you, know, you would have businesses but they're not um, you know a bait and tackle uh, that is you know right there um, on the dock running a business and then the floating structure we borrowed from the state definition of the coastal management uh, to address 
not only, as I mentioned before, the homes, but also commercial structures and what that meant. And then we also defined boat within, what well, a boat definition one was in within the zoning ordinance, which was defined in the Harbor Marina regulations. So many communities are some, you know, prohibit this within the zoning ordinance. Um, some, uh, you know, either just address liveaboards that don't allow liveaboards, or you have to, they have a certain day, um, like, you know, seven days you can only live on a boat, and then you have to move it or it has to be moved at a certain location. Uh, so that's one way to kind of regulate, you know, these floating homes uh, where they have to be pretty movable. Um, so that is uh, staff's recommendation uh, before you. What is, your what is staff's recommendation? It is to prohibit uh, floating structures within the town. And this uh, particular floating structure that you showed a picture of is, is going to be prohibited if we make this change? Uh, that's one other thing. If it's in the zoning ordinance, uh, any use that is there now would be grandfathered in. I'm ready to start barreling questions if we're to the end of this. Are you at the end of your presentation? Barrel away. All right. Mm -hmm. So what <laughs> use is it for one that's existing there? If any, well, the one that's there now. Because you said it will be grandfathered. Yes. So by this, it would meet this definition of what it currently exists so as a structure on a floating platform. My question is, is when you went, when staff went and watched it move, did you, just, where did it move to? I can't imagine that boat went self, for whatever the word was. It, it moved, you know, 20 feet off the dock and then it came back. So, but it wouldn't technically have been able to come in on its own. It moved, I guess, from the waterway into its own. Where would it, when you say in? I think they had it on. It moved into the slip on its a own. A barge yeah, brought it. Like it couldn't just have been put down the river. And just I think a tugboat did. I think a tugboat brought it. Yeah, it pushed it. Mm -hmm. it, it could have gotten here. It would have took a mm -hmm. long time. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's, I don't understand how it would be. I mean, I understand how it would be grandfathered in. I just, um, like you said, what the use is for, what is it being used for now that would be grandfathered? But we're changing what the definition is and that it would meet this definition now as a, it would not be viewed as a boat, it would be viewed as a floating structure. Well, when you went out there and said, show me that it can be self-propelled, and they did, <laughs> therefore that proved that it's a boat, so wouldn't it still meet this requirement as is, even if you, even rewritten? No, it would it would uh, meet the definition of a floating structure. How? Well, but it says a boat may be deemed a floating structure when its means of propulsion has been removed or rendered inoperative. So meaning if you go out there and did the same test that you did the last time, it would meet the definition of being a boat right it moved i guess what mike mr <coughs> commissioner hoffer is saying if another one showed up just like that and could do exactly what that one did when you asked mm -hmm. it to perform then that would be okay even if we approved this is that correct am i right well i, th yeah. I think yeah. we're getting at the what to be used without a permanent foundation and i, I wanted to question what the permanent foundation i mean like an answer to that part first okay go ahead sorry if another one showed up and could do the same exact test why can't it be there Yes, yeah, so it, it is a floating platform. It is not a permanent foundation where it has pilings going into the ground. And in the definition of boat, it is uh, designed to be self-propelled and used to travel from place to place. And I would make the argument that this really isn't designed and it's on a floating platform to travel place to place, as you mentioned before. Well, it got here. Um, and it could have gotten here on its own. The the problem I had with the, some of the wording you had, and not in the actual ordinance, but you said it looks like a home and not a boat. There's a lot of houseboats that look like a trailer. I used to live on one. Mm -hmm. So I think it's dangerous that we start thinking in that manner what something might look like. And 
um, the floating structure definition is confusing at best. Um, permanent foundation is pilings. Well, boats don't have pilings. Um, I, I just I question the whole motive behind this, uh, saying that house you know a houseboat's okay, but not a not a floating home. I just have a problem with that. So, and you were saying that when they came in and it was registered with the state as a boat, mm -hmm. right? Therefore, I are a boat. That doesn't make it a boat, <laughs> right? I mean, I'm not trying to be smart. No, yeah. but no, that's a good point. It's yes. Registered by the state as a boat, and it could move. And then we went to Cama, and Cama said, no, it's not a boat. This is a floating structure. So you do have two different state agencies coming up with two different answers. Wow. Sounds like a lawsuit. <laughs> yeah, Sounds right. like a lawsuit. I'll be honest with you. I'm not sure I want to get in the middle of them. I think that, um, and I feel for the homeowners that live there that this big thing, uh, and I know them, and I feel for them, but if it was a three- or four-story, multi-million-dollar yacht, would their feelings be the same, that it was just as big? Let's back off this neighborhood for a sec, if you give me. Uh, I'm shocked that nobody's here. I was really hoping that some yeah. of the, Let's someone back off. from the applicant would be here. If we just we take it away, questions. if we take it away from that neighborhood, so we ha honestly we shouldn't look at it as a neighborhood. I know there's been some issues. We've heard issues back and forth with that. No, it's uh, in a marina. With that marina, and then the adjoining uh, or the close by neighborhood. So let's back off of that, and let's say uh, uh, a local resident has a home on the waterfront, or maybe he has property on the waterfront. And she decides, you know what, I want to put me a structure out there. I'm not going to go far. I've got to follow all the rules and get it registered as a boat. But I want to build this little thing, and I want to have that so when people come, we can have. Now, is, if we were to do that, would that be considered, at this point, since they can do it now, would that be considered a taking? Now, I'm not talking about technically lawsuit-wise, but I think everybody can see where I'm going. They can do something now. Would and if, we, if you take that neighborhood and push it out of your mind and say it didn't exist, what about the other waterfront homes that there is no view to obstruct, it's only their view? Are we kind of taking something away from them? They still would have the ability to live on the water. It's just that it would have to be in the form of a boat and not you know, on a floating platform. Right. But they couldn't build something like is over there even if they proved it would pro propel itself and people on those things really have no intention of ever going anywhere however they do follow the technicality of the law uh, I think you see what I'm saying though what if somebody's got a waterfront property just wants to have a little structure out there they want to be able to do it a certain way so they go through the process of making a boat they don't have a trailer because they're never ever going to move it it's just there, there for their enjoyment We'd be, we'd be taking away that ability to have it look somewhat like a cabana. Yeah, I mean, it was, you know, it had means propulsion and it was designed as a boat. <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, they still could do it. <coughs> mm -hmm. So, um, why did Cama feel differently about it? What was their rationale? Uh, that this was on a floating platform. And it was it, it met the definition of a floating structure rather than a boat. So who regulates that? Is it the state or the or CAMA? I mean, if he registers it as a boat, the state looks at it as a boat. How are we, as a town, <coughs> to say yeah. otherwise? And CAMA's saying is CAMA says we can't have a handicap ramp because of turtles. Yeah, and and they didn't say that it's prohibited. Sorry. It's they just online. said that, okay, oh, now you oh just this God. is when you need a permit. Like we don't permit boats. This thing just came in. We. He didn't contact us or anything. We didn't know about it until we right. got phone calls. Um, and Cameron just says now you have to go through a permitting process because you no longer are a boat coming and going and designed to, to maneuver in water. Designed to be. I mean, I don't know. Well, it's definitely not a boat. State can say it's a boat. It's definitely not a boat. Well, let's hear it. What do you have to say? Saying this. I mean, when you look at it, it's definitely not a boat. It's a house. Well, it's not a boat it's, like my 21 foot house center floating, console or like your boat, but but it's a definitely a floating structure. I've lived on a houseboat before. I wouldn't want to take but it out in the water. not one that looked like that. You know, I wouldn't want to take it out in the water. But no, it's that, single that, story. That's why you have these legal definitions. Yeah. You know, so you can, you know, 
you guys can have your differences. Doesn't about. look like That's a boat. That's a boat. That, no, it's not a boat. Right. It doesn't look like a boat. You have legal definitions right. to Correct. describe them. And I, I, so I get where you're going, although the definition you guys you have here, it would still be considered a boat even based on this definition. So it wouldn't stop this from happening again. I, I would just argue that that's not a boat. How are you saying that? Why, did you, why didn't you say that when you went out there and watched them drive it? Because we didn't have that definition. We're adopting this. This is a new well, definition. Explain how the floating structure definition up behind you tells us it's not a boat because... Because it, it means any structure. It doesn't say anything about it just being on a floating... Not a boat supported by means of flotation. It, it has, doesn't have... It has flotation. Mm -hmm. It has flotation. It which is a motor and it took it for a little Which ride. is intended for human habitation, which it, this clearly is. It's a house. Oh, there's a lot of boats intended for human inhabitation, and a lot of them live in that marina. But they meet the, they meet the definition of boat. I think I think this is really a boat's not built on 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 a platform. flotation devices. Why can't it, it be? But it's not. Well, it can be. I mean, I what think I just I just think that no makes them. I think like we're that. we're nitpicking into words that it just spells lawyers. Yeah, that's what they spell. Uh, I think it already spells. <laughs> I think it already does. A barge. A barge is a structure. A boat. A barge doesn't have a way to propel itself without a tugboat. This one does. No, it's two outboard not motors. To get in. Right, it's not a barge. No, it's a structure. A regular barge. A barge is a structure. Can't propel itself, and they they have to push them with boats. This one can propel itself. For how far? I mean, what's yeah, it matter how far? Feet. What's it matter how far? That's why we're changing the definition. Have gotten well, what's it matter how far? Uh, maybe you should have something in definition. Because they're saying there's because yeah, on it's got to go thirty five like, feet. Because well, I mean, well, on a boat, they're saying it's designed to travel from place to place. I mean, it can moving from, from one, one slip in the marina to, to the other is not slip. place to this place. boat yeah. moved from place opinion. to place and it could have done it with yeah. its own propulsion but it would have taken four days well they couldn't I, and my only argument they here bring is it here with their own propulsion the only the, my only argument here is it just seems like a lawsuit it just seems like a lawsuit the way it's worded the way the whole thing came about um, the applicants not even here and, and that's one thing the applicant was pushing it for to men in a harbor ordinance and then um, staff realized that yes it does this ordinance needs some attention so we took it upon ourselves and to go through the zoning route is why it's before you now yep. now there's a couple ways if if is it's something any, oh, these types of structures if it's something that planning and zoning commission the town wants to see then we could come back and say okay here are appropriate places in town that they can be um, but I know the fear in many of uh, waterfront property owners is oh is, is my backyard next is, I, is somebody gonna pull one of these that's NIMBY though not that's, in my backyard if, what if somebody a, that owned waterfront property wanted to have one? To what if somebody that owns waterfront property wants to build a marina of these you know right. we're really tying so some the hands town want to see that do we not? Do we not want to see that? I don't know. That's the question. Well, I'm interested in what Commissioner um, John and Deb, what do you guys Yeah, I want to hear everybody's opinion. Yeah. And I'm certainly not making my last motion on this one. <clears throat> well, I'll go back to the point that Commissioner Rouse made that what's to prevent someone else from doing this exact thing? Um, I don't know that in the definitions that we have here, I mean, if, it, if the state considers that to be a boat, I think that's what the hang up here is. It, you know, in my opinion, it's not a boat. Everybody else's opinion, it might not be a boat, but according to the state, it's a, it's a boat. It's registered as a boat. Um, I don't see anything, in, and that was a, the point I think Commissioner Rouse was trying to make, is if we go through this exercise here and change this, what's to prevent somebody else from doing the exact same thing? There's not enough specifics, I don't think, in here. If you do want to permit it, uh, Jeremy? Mm -hmm. What if they put it on pontoons? What's yeah. the difference between that and a pontoon boat now? A pontoon is not a structure. It's a boat. So if they took it off of the floating barge it's on and put it on pontoons, they can leave it there? If they can, Under this if definition. they can navigate and it meets the definition of boat. That makes no sense to me, so we're not really preventing anything. But a pontoon would never hold that structure. No. no. Five of them might. Mm -hmm. It's air. Mm -hmm. What's holding it up now? 
They could be foam filled. I mean, there's technology can go anywhere with this. So I'm just saying that people are creative and they know how to get around ordinances. We, I watch it every day. Which I've is obvious. That's why we're talking about this right why now. We're talking about it okay? right now. Exactly. I feel like that we've been put in a position as a town to become referee for something that we didn't approve. We didn't approve the first time. So there was a way to skirt around it with the law. And so that happened. So if we don't put some teeth into it, it's not worth even it's not even worth putting these words down on paper because someone will do exactly the same thing as long as they can put a outboard motor on it and push it 50 feet it's self-propelled so i think we need some teeth that say no i think We're well could could they, could they get on any boat that i've ever bought there has to be a certificate as a boat like what the occupancy is I what the weight be. limit is all of that i mean would the Coast Guard or anybody be willing to give this thing that approval? Because if they wouldn't, then that would be a Isn't certain that part way of your to registration? distinguish. In that part of your registration, which the state's given this vessel? No, the state's not. The state's not who puts that on that, that sticker on here. It has to be approved by the Coast Guard. Mm -hmm. The plans have to go to the Coast Guard and have to be approved by a boat manufacturer to prove the limit because they do the disbursement of water based on how much surface that you have and what the limit of people are and I don't Weight think limits. I don't think yeah I don't think that something like that could get passed through as a boat in my opinion but I don't know and that could be but that could be the way that you distinguish that, if that's it doesn't a better have, way to do it I if think. it doesn't have a Coast Guard certification for weight limit and occupancy it can't be considered a boat period whether it propels or not I kind of uh Commissioner LeCompte's point to me is dead on. I don't even know Good point. that I'd care to even vote on a motion, but if we if we do, I guess I'll have to. But I think she's right. We somehow got placed in, or, or we didn't get placed, but there, I know that staff has had a lot of pressure, and I know that there's been back and forth with uh, uh, two uh, several owners in the area who have different different ideas and so i feel i feel for you and i know you're doing your jobs and i applaud you for trying to do it in the, uh you know uh, uh dispassionately um i don't know that without a whole heck of a lot more information uh discussion uh representation uh i'd feel comfortable personally casting a vote either way because i'm not sure it'd be the right i'd be doing the right thing and if i don't know and I don't have a real strong gut feeling, I, I, I don't think I could do it. But I, I don't think it looks like a boat either, but according to everything I've heard, it is a boat. I don't care what something looks like. Well, I think if it's we... It's like saying his house is ugly. It's not a house. Hey, my house is okay. <laughs> I think if we don't vote, we're going to have more of this occurring. Well, I think if we do it, we should do it the right way, though, Commissioner Boswell, that if we have to send... The town back to get us some more information about maybe how the Coast Guard looks at it like uh, Commissioner Hogan suggested I think that's been the best suggestion yet that you know how does the Coast Guard look at it how does it get certified uh, yeah, how do we know now, how to a classify private personal use vessel is a Coast Guard in, involved no so this I mean that's what and that's a that's a and if you have a captain's license yes and you are you are chartering boats you have to get the coast guard involved so the state well, who, who the mandates state? the sticker I, I swear it says coast guard no it's the you I go you go to island tackle and get them so it's just through the state though the, the no wildlife. Not, not the wildlife sticker i'm not talking about your numbers and the sticker i'm talking about the sticker that the wildlife people when they pull you they look at to see what your occupancy is what your weight limit is because that that's boat the has, vessel maker that, that does that. But they right? have to get that approved. I thought it was from the Coast. I, I thought my sticker says from the Coast Guard. Maybe not. But whoever approves it, if these people can't get those people to approve that as a boat. I think that's a valid, at least something to look at to see that we can find a better way to define why it's not allowed than just this definition. And just because the state says that's a definition doesn't mean it makes any sense. I have a question. All right. Is it allowable for the um, town harbor was it harbor master to have like a, an operation test that people have to pass? You know, yeah. prove it. Like you know, don't you, 
can't, you know, I don't get to float out there 50 feet and come back. You know, I need you to go up, cross under Sears Cut Bridge and come back. And then you what? can do that if you're a boat. Yeah, so, so you're trying to say a put a distance requirement? I don't know, it's just a thought. I don't know. Or can you put it up to the discretion? Is that legal at all? Discretion of the harbor master? Be careful with that because there's plenty a number of boats in this town. Uh, I boats. I used to be in uh, the boat slip business. There's a number of people in this town that own boats that d the guts of the engine are gone, and they have every intention of fixing it one day when they can. Right. But it, it's in, it's in, all it takes is an angry neighbor. Except to a place right. they go right. spend the night some nights and do whatever. So you got to be a little bit. Yeah, I hear you. You know. But that's still a boat. Not under that's this still definition. A boat. If, it, if, <laughs> if its propulsion is gone, it's not a boat anymore. That's under this definition, which I, I – why do they have well, to have – It says by paddle or, or other means. I could paddle that <laughs> thing all over the harbor. <laughs> I might see somebody paddle a 50-foot hatteras that doesn't have a motor. In it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just – I'm shaky on the way this whole thing reads. and I'm not against making the change, Jeremy. I'm not against making the change. I'm against being a referee between two property owners, but that's where we're at, I guess. Well, can I ask one question though? With with a house with this boat that we're talking about, how, when you have a boat that's designed to live on, as a way to pump out the sewer and it has a way to do all that, is this thing been designed with the same kind of system as a boat that, might that there's a, a way to too. pump out the sewer? Because if there's not, then it's gonna. Wh are they pumping it right into the waterway, or? Now, my understanding. It has a holding tank, and where they would have a mobile pump out come to the boat. It's just like it's got a holding tank because it used to be down uh, downtown Wilmington, across from uh, downtown Water. What, you, what was that Water Street? Mm -hmm. It used to be across the river, a little where west. Where the yacht sales were. Yeah, there was, and there was a number of them there. It sat there for years. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. fairly certain. And I think we just, regardless of what has happened or is happening, it's. How does the town want to move forward with this type of use is what, is what you're looking at. And I, I question why do we not want to have people being able to live on that type of a vessel. And if it's what if somebody develops a marina just for them? You know, and there's still property left that can be done that way. And I, I try to always think that way, think more forward that there's a piece of property for sale over on St. Joseph that somebody could build a marina at. And what if they just wanted to put little floating homes on it like they're doing downtown? And then we want to have a floating yeah. homes neighborhood on. Got a point. Why are we hell bent against about prohibiting this? That that's an option. And that, that now that, that if PNC wants us to look at that, we would go back and um, in the ordinance to say, okay, where where is there appropriate in Myrtle Grove Sound a place that's appropriate for these? And we would want to see them with some standards. I'm at a loss on this one. I hate being stumped on my last. Who day. thinks we should vote on it? Is anybody ready to make a motion or vote? Speak now, Ms. Boswell. You want to vote on it? I think personally, I would like to see a little more clarification before I'm willing to vote on this issue. I think that's a wise decision. Can we send it back with some extra? We can give all the direction we want to them. I mean, because I do, like I said, just because they put the self promotion on there to go so many feet, I like that. And then, like you said, what if we do this, we're eliminating what could in the future be, like you said, if St. Joseph could be developed where it could be that area, it could be for that use, that could be the little tiny home boat structures, whatever, right. floating structures, right. but it's just too gray to me. Had the um, thing been 10 foot tall, would we be sitting here now? No. No. You'd be at home watching football if you like football. Mm. Do you think we should vote? No, I don't think we should vote. So then let's come to a consensus on some direction for staff. We'll start down at the end with Mr. Hoffer. <laughs> Like how I just did that. I, I don't know. This one, I'm stumped. I am. I'm absolutely stumped. I'm not sure if we feel like we need to be prohibiting this sort of thing just because a bunch of people are complaining about it. From a former code enforcement officer. Well, if 
your code enforcement officer, your opinion is the zoning. The code, ordinance. right? That's your opinion. But yeah, this is le this is left open for it be in the ordinance right. or not? Do you think that this interpretation is left open for, uh, or this definition is left open for interpretation? Absolutely. I think yeah. that that would still would have met the definition of a boat, even with this. Even if what you're trying to do is prevent this from happening again, I don't think that this definition would. Because it doesn't call out the flotation device itself. I think. What is what is floating it? Well, still. Are you going to define a hole or or a pontoon or a barge or? You know, how do we define what it's floating on? I guess it's, one thing I'd like uh, you to, structure. One thing I'd like you to ask the town attorney, uh, Mr. Hardison. Yes, sir. Is since the purpose of this, and Mr. Hoffer just uh, you know uh, articulated it, the purpose is to prevent this from happening happening again. Uh, what type of standing are we in if we make? Uh, a change based on the fact that we don't want to see it happen again. I don't know the answer. I'm not suggesting you do. But I'd like to hear uh, something from the town attorney that says, if you don't want to see it happen again, you know, is, if that's why you're doing it, is that a basis, a good basis for to doing clarify? It? Would this? I don't know. Would this vessel have to move if we made this change? That'd be grandfathered. No, it it'd would be not. grandfathered. It in. would be grandfathered in, and it, it, as a land use, you can regulate uses as you deem appropriate right and you can prohibit uses as long as they're not protected by state statute well, further to further that question that um, Commissioner Blumenthal asked if that's the case would this particular marina whose owner moved this here if they if this particular owner decided to do this again would not that marina be uh, grandfathered in that would be the next question I would ask you to ask yeah, I mean, it's, not, it's, the, it's the same parcel. is what I'm saying. It would be in per structure, opinion, though. It would be it per would be structure. Per floating slip. So if you that floating slip, that structure would be grandfathered in. And what part that of just float slip? Okay. So, yeah. but but uh, but an so it'd be just like a slip. CUP for a bar. It could always be a bar forever. Correct. But an adjacent. Uh, boat slip on that same parcel, same parcel ID number would not be allowed. Now, if that structure there was it would be under no. our non-conforming ordinance if it, if it was moved for out of for 180 days then it would have to comply so if they move that out if they move if it, it out, it out or if they wanted to bring another one in they would not be it would have to there. it would it, no, that one right they would have to use that one they couldn't uh -huh. just switch it out it's specific to the structure but what about like if it was damaged how much of it Just would have to be damaged to before they would be able that vote uh, it would be uh 50 percent that house and boat. then as it stands right now is it able to be used for any kind of commercial purpose um <laughs> yes it could be so with, with that, approvals to a business at any time with appropriate approvals having to meet you know, then you look at commercial structures have to be uh, building code, fire code, um, zoning, and what is it going to be used for? As far as commercial, is it an, is it allowed use? We'd, we'd have to evaluate that. Uh, can I make a suggestion that uh, we give this back to the town, asking for more clarification on things like what Commissioner Hogan brought up about what it, how it gets classified by the Coast Guard or the state, or if there's any other definition we can use besides this one right here that says it's a floating structure um, that we find out more information that we have something to go by that says you know we're not gonna allow this because of this specific reason by the Coast Guard or for this specific reason other than this this uh, definition to me is very muddy and confusing well technically I could read what a floating structure is and still say well this is still a boat because right. it can self-propel itself. Right. So I, think it just I don't it think I don't think like I said it's in the teeth of the matter and I don't think this goes far if if what we want to do is restrict and not allow these structures then it needs to have more teeth. And is that what definition. we want to do? And is that what we want to do? Yeah I could still come back and uh, prohibit it and come up with a different definition that you all agree with but are you still going to be wrestling with are we going to prohibit it? Right. Right. And is that? I think that's where we are. I, th I think that's uh, going to be a great question for the, the new incoming people coming in. 
<laughs> well, I also think that I also think that maybe we would consider uh, a public hearing on who would be in favor of having structures like that in the harbor. Excellent idea. Let, right. Let let the public decide. It would have been great to have the actual applicant here to ask questions and get feedback. And the from. owner of well, the I think what and the owner, said. Well, the owner, the owner, the owner of the structure the boat the boat. slash boat doesn't have to be here, I guess, but. You know, the applicant could have at least shown the courtesy of being here so that we could ask questions. Well, I think, again, the town kind of took it upon itself to, to take it from the applicant because we were going to go the zoning route. Okay. So this is actually an application from the town, not a person? Yeah, it's, that's what it has turned into. Okay. It originally started as that makes more sense, the applicant. That makes more sense. Anybody else? Suggestions on what, how to direct town staff on where to go with this I think the only the only other point that I would bring up is and I don't know how we would go about this um, Commissioner LeCompte said you know a public hearing you know I'm I'm stuck with the fact do we want to prohibit this everywhere it's come you know it's a uh, commissioner it's currently uh, prohibited but we just don't know how to define it, it. It, it you know made the point about you know if somebody builds a marina with you, you wants to do that I don't you know, I don't know if people would be in favor of that or not. Land is getting expensive. A boat slip is a lot cheaper. I mean, that would that would be a, a, one of the things that I would ask, rather than us deciding that because an applicant is not happy that this structure or this boat is there, is that how the majority of the town feels, the majority of the citizens, the majority of the rest of the waterfront owners? Who may do all the may want to do some of the points that all the other commissioners have brought up? And here we are. I, I, as chair, I don't know that I've seven years. I don't know that I've ever been in this predicament. I don't even want to. Uh, uh, I personally will not even uh, make a recommendation to ask staff to go back and tighten it up or to loosen it. I feel like there was an unfortunate. Uh, uh, difference of opinions between two uh, property owners and the subsequent thing happened whether it's a boat or not a boat I don't have I just don't see it being a thing that's I don't see it as being a thing that's really going to affect the town I'm going through in my mind I've gone I know most parcels in that yacht basin I know most of them probably not everyone and I just know what's there because I've ridden past them hundreds probably thousands of times I'm trying to think where else could it occur I don't see it and there's Happy. another excuse me, um, there's another option that you have is simply saying you know the ordinance is what we have now and that's what we need to enforce and we can move from there and you could just recommend that we keep the existing ordinance I don't know that I want to take that step either and be that guy you still have, I, you still I understand. have the, the you still have the propulsion in if there the propulsion still would be in there so, so if, if you if could they're self-propelled, well, it doesn't matter what they're sitting on. Like I said, so is it something? Out. Is it a loophole that they're using to, for a floating it's structure? Exactly, a loophole they're using. Is it? I don't see it being. Do you? Or keep repeating itself, personally. So there's there's all kinds of loopholes in the ordinances. If you if you have a piece of property in the R3 and you want to build two structures on it, and you you want to build the second structure bigger than the 25 percent rule, you build a hallway across to it, and you can do it. There's all kinds of loopholes. And is there a height limit on these things? No, there's not a height limit on boats. Nope. Wow. And, boat, and boats are taller than that. The bridge. <laughs> Mate, well, that oh, not, yeah, there's masses on sailboats that are. Masks on sailboats, exactly. Yeah. I think it's just a, it's a, it's a. I think it's a. I don't even think we're clear that we want to make this sort of thing. That's where I was going. I don't. Why worry about the nomenclature and the definitions when we don't even know the ultimate question which is do we want it or not I mean because let's be realistic if somebody did buy a parcel on St. Joseph to put in a marina they're going to come before the planning board they're going to come before they're going to have to have a CP gonna, for so, a gonna, soon. so there is where you run into well you'll get your public hearing at that time because the public will they have, don't have to say what's going to go in their slips but, the, but it would be, based their, on the, based it would be on their water frontage, though, so there's no HOA like waterfront. Right. Yeah, but uh, the neighbors might not want it, yeah. which is where we are right here. I'll let them handle it at that time. I 
I don't want to go down on that slope. Mr. Hogan, I know you have more to say. And I get, and I guess one other point is the the, the applicants um, requested this change in order to prevent this from happening again. That the that the structure that's there, the boat that's there, is going to be grandfathered in. That's not going to go away, and. From our discussion, it would appear that somebody could turn around and do the exact same thing. They did it under the old ordinance or the current ordinance. They can do it under the new ordinance the way it's written. Not yeah. to mention the fact that where that structure was placed, even if somebody did do it again, that place is uh, that thing is already in front of. Uh, it's it's just get past it's just off of uh, uh, the walkway between the land and the marina so I don't think I don't see what and the current the one that it, I mean, it sits on a structure that houseboat does um, or you just said boat yeah well <laughs> well it is. under our current definition it is a boat yes you're correct it sits on the same I don't think this definition let, changes let that. me ask it sits on the same thing that the uh, that the slips sat on the floating piers in between the slips is that somewhat correct same type yeah uh, and it has a flotation device underneath the structure very similar to what holds up the uh, yeah, hole is, floating piers but it does sit on a structure where a boat does not stand it okay. sits on a hole uh yeah it sits okay. on a hole what he's saying is where the typical floating pier is in between slips this whole thing is that and it's got those black uh, floatable things on flotation the device mm -hmm. right yeah. and, and those have a permanent foundation because they are they are um, into a pile mm -hmm. I guess what I'm hearing from Jeremy though is that the old ordinance really didn't allow these structures and they got by with a loophole that little that little thing self propulsion I agree and so but they still didn't I mean it sounds to me like floating floating structures were not allowed but through a loophole they made it so y'all are saying we're like trying to change where we're headed, but it seems to me like it was already, it, they were already prohibiting them. It was just this loophole. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the I don't think, I don't, is it a I don't, what I'm saying is, is I don't think loophole? we're trying to change the whole direction of the town because the direction to me is pretty obvious that they didn't want these structures and that somebody made it through with a loophole. So I don't think Two we're actually motors. changing the whole direction of the town because it was already in there. Two outboard motors is actually two uh, outboard motors is how they got the loophole. Yeah. They had to have two. I mean I'm just saying two we're not motors. we're not like taking something that's allowed now and trying to disallow it. We're taking something that's really wasn't allowed if you read it except for But it's more complicated than that. And that's where we're all stuck. Oh I, I totally agree. Yeah. This is I mean, I'm not. I'm not against. Be, I think that fixing it. I'm not against fixing it because it, it was not allowed. I agree. Is to have it. the definition of boat be. Jeremy, you can't get that same sticker that a boat gets. Don't we have people who live on boats in marinas and that's anyway? Why I yes. To, that's why okay, and that's allowable, to, correct? Find out how to yes. As long as the, uh, if you make it yourself, you still have to get that sticker. A private marina. Maybe they have that sticker that's not getting that. And they have to have appropriate pump outs mm -hmm. um, as a it's marina. It's yeah. But yeah, you can live on a boat. Okay. <laughs> I know it is. It's not really a I'm not disagreeing. People at, uh, what's that little neighborhood in between uh, Waterfront and uh, Otter Creek? Otter Creek. There's people, I mean, there's people, there's liver boards on this island. I'm They're all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. By the sea? Yeah. Jerry A. Bear lives up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There, there's sea? no he's Otter Creek. The Otter Creek. Small. Yeah. The one at Otter, Otter Creek. Creek. They're at Otter Creek. Yeah. They're at Waterfront. They're at. Uh, They're at Waterfront for sure. Oh, yeah. I think we go back to uh, what Commissioner Hogan brought up about the sticker that's inside a boat or, or the plaque. Actually, isn't it more like yeah. a plaque that's inside the boat that says it's rated for this much weight, it's rated for this many passengers, it's rated this way, and where that comes from, and does this type of a vessel is it able to acquire that as a vessel? And that's all. That is on every recreational vehicle or boat. Every boat that you buy has a sticker on it that says, "This boat you can have six people or this one thousand pounds, right. or you can have ten people or twelve hundred pounds." It's and I'm wondering, rating. can this particular it's structure it's a get a sticker? It's a rating system. If it can't get that rating system, then there's your there's your answer. 
It's not then you don't have to have any of the definitions because it's not a boat without that sticker. But be but be sure that all boats have to have that. They do. No matter what. And Jeremy, if it, and if it does it? get a sticker, excuse me, and I'm just trying to clarify, then does that change how you would view this type of structure? I don't view this type of structure as anything other than a house. A house on a pier. On a pier. Just just like the Gibson boat I used to live on that looked like a trailer on a hull. Anybody thinks it's not a house boat's kind of kidding themselves. I think where we did was we didn't want to go down that rabbit hole of what's a boat and what's not a boat when the wildlife says one thing and camera says the other. I personally didn't want to go down there because you're putting yourself right in the middle of two rulings and you're automatically 50% wrong to begin with. Has our town attorney been involved in any of this? Uh, she has, yes. And that's who said if you want to prohibit it, it should be done or even regulate it, allow it. Whatever the town wants to do, but it should be handled through the zoning ordinance. Right, but has she read this new ordinance to see if there's any issues with it or any uh, opinions on it? Or um, did she? Has those definitions come from the state? Yes. The definition did. of a floating structure came from the state. Did, uh, did the town attorney offer any uh, any uh, 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 examples of way to phrase it? Not only if you're for it, but if you're against it, so that it would be allowed or would not be allowed based on the technical, or, or is that what that is that what this is? Yeah, basically, you know, you, the definition would be the same. You just define it. Now, the the answer would be: Do you want to prohibit it, or are there certain areas you want to allow it with standards? Which I got a question. If we vote on it right now, how do you think it would go up if we said we wanted to approve it, but only at that marina? No. What if we voted on this as written, yes or no, up or down? Does it's it go to council <laughs> next, and then they have to decide whether it actually happens? Say Correct. that again. If, if, if we vote up or down right now, somebody makes a motion, we get a second, we make a vote. It goes to council regardless, and it's a, and it's their decision to make on what really happens here. That is correct. That okay. Just wanted to clarify to that. Yes. But why would we? I just wanted to put it out there. Um, well, can we so say it with stipulations? I mean, I don't. I don't yeah. have enough information to vote on. Um, I don't have enough information either. I, just I mean, you could out. definitely go with here's planning and zoning's recommendation and move it forward one way or another. Did you guys? Did anyone talk to anyone from the Coast Guard? Uh, I mean, Ed was Ed's Coast Guard, so wouldn't he know like? How, like with the boat, how the sticker. And oh, yeah. Yeah, and we reviewed the their regulations, sticker. and it was all more for if it was a commercial structure as well or a commercial boat mm -hmm. um, take, you know, that involved passengers, not, you know, for pleasure boats. Okay. Does it make sense to or have Or we didn't see where they would regulate a floating home. Okay. We did not see that in their regulations. Okay. I have a question about CAMA. So if Kama says this is not a boat, where's Kama at on having it removed? Uh, it says it's in a waterway. Now, they don't prohibit floating structures. It's just that permit. is when they say, okay, now you need a permit. Does he have a permit? Uh, currently does not. He, my understanding, he's a, trying to obtain those permits from Kama. So if Kama says no. Oh, this is a whole new area. So if Kama says no, you can't. we can't permit that. If he can't meet Kama's regulations, then he would have to be removed. But if he does meet those regu but if he does meet those regulations, then you have two state agencies that says, "Yep, it's okay." I mean, there's our answer right there. I'd wait on this. One. I, I would like to make a motion if everybody's ready. Oh boy, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I'd make a motion that we table. Oh, sorry. Hold on, Ms. Boswell. I'm sorry, I had this is where I knew I had a question when I was reading this. So on the paragraph where you have the town received a complaint from the applicant on 626 stating that a floating home was located in the marina. Upon investigation, the complaint was found that the vessel with the whole ID had two outboard motors demonstrated it did not meet the definition of a floating home because it had preclusion. Subsequently, it was found that the vessel moved into a boat slip and now has removed the mechanism and was issued a violation on 728. Yes. So what will be done about the violation? Will they be made to remove the structure? Like, what, how is that going to be handled? So my understanding is when they were moving it, an actual boat uh, crashed in one of the outboard motors. So then they... I wonder if it was the same boat that blocked them from getting out. 
<laughs> so then they just curious. the outboard motors to repair them, but now they are back on. Uh, they're in the process of obtaining that. And my understanding, though, uh, it is something that CAMO would permit. CAMO would permit. So, if, wow. Well, I thought we had our answer, but I think that we, doesn't mean I we, think we, I think just we because see, CAMO permits something doesn't mean we have to I think we see what CAMO says first. But you're saying CAMO's not approving it as a boat. As They're a proving it as, as a, a floating structure, which right. then, which which then would violate rights. your rules because a floating structure can't be there. Well, you still got two agencies. But it still has to meet camera guidelines. Only one of them says it's No, but I'm saying, I'm saying if camp, well, I mean, yeah, but the one, the one is wildlife, and they'll take money from anybody. If you send them money for a sticker, they'll give you one. Okay. Whether the boat runs, doesn't run, they are just an, they are an agency that takes which money. Would be, which would be interesting because you have to have a title to get a boat sticker. And that's, and that's another you interesting can concept. Get a, you could bond it and get it where get a title. Oh, yeah. You could, there's ways around that, too. And, and it can meet both. It can meet. But if CAMO approves it and they approve it as a floating structure, does that not give you the authority to remove it because it's deemed a floating structure? No, because it, it meets their definition and their permit requirements, but it also would have to meet the town. And the, currently the town regulations is that as long as it has propulsion, it can stay. It's grandfathered regardless. It is grandfathered regardless. Ain't going. So uh, and, the and only thing that's going to get that out of there is if Cama says no. I was going to say, so if Cama says no, we can't override that. But if they say yes, it's, we can override that. It's the most restrictive would apply. So if the town says no, but Cama says yes, it can't be there. If we say yes, but then Cama says no, it still can't be there. But if we both meets our they, regulations could be different on how they treat this. But if they get to the same, both have to say yes. Yes, then it can stay. I think it's kind of like that thing we did. Uh, I think uh, uh, Mr. Murphy asked us about a year or so ago. We were looking at tree ordinances, and then all of a sudden there were things there were things going on that at at a different level than here, the state level. And we were just, and, and the recommendation was let's just not address this. We didn't have to vote or anything. Let's not address it until such time as we have some. Direction which way it's going. I think that's probably the and that was going to be a motion, but I don't even think it needs to be a motion. I would suggest well, we, we just have the state actually looking into this like we did with trees. Is in, in that correct, Miles? We have, we, have, we have a state agency. But we have a state agency looking at permitting it. And they're going to call it one thing or another and say yes or no. And, and the state doesn't prohibit these. They're just saying, okay, when this thing looks like what it does and it meets a floating structure, then now you're no longer a vessel. You're a little bit more than that, and you need to meet some permit requirements. But my point would be, once they make that determination, they're saying this is okay, and this certain, that would be good information to have. Hey, you, these people can accomplish what, or, or ha, can or will or have accomplished what we want can, to do. Can you go back to our what our definition was sure. before, please? The, pre, the current definition. And if we want to be consistent with CAMA, it's just a matter of they would allow it. So do we then, you get back to that question, do we want to allow it? And the new definition, without means of propulsion, can be a paddle now. So this new recommendation that you if put it's, up. Not if it's on a structure. Yeah, that whole structure thing, I mean. Um, Jeremy, the new recommendation you have is it mirrors the state's <laughs> definition <laughs> of the floating home. I can care less about floating it. structures that you have. No, I want to <laughs> you have that it mirrors the states yes and that the current land use plan prohibits floating homes as well they were it does I agree. so it's not an allowable use under the land use plan that we just sent well now is it is going for approval this is from the current land use plan okay right. our plan that was just a adopted but now has to be certified before it's official by the Coastal Resource Commission which governs CAMA um, which it does not you know when we're going through that process this wasn't really a community issue right uh, so, so it's it not even in the up, land so use plan well it's still like this it's still today, today. today. Mm -hmm. but the new one doesn't have anything about that uh, correct and uh, the 
because gateway current one work. does and it was a carryover just from it was an existing policy in the old one from 97 so i don't know 97 there was some at that time maybe some issues or there was some, somebody had an idea to bring some floating yes. homes in and they're like we don't want this so if, if we all right so the so new if you read just this then he can't have he can't, that ha that can't be there. If well, you read after, just you, after you go to the definition, but then you got the ordinance, and then you got yeah. the propulsion. And I then think I, what we're trying to do is just define it more from what it currently reads. Is that correct? More robust, yes. So then, you know, so they don't just put two outboard motors and float it in and out and say, "Oh, I'm good to go. I got propulsion." Right. So maybe mm -hmm. it's a little bit more than that. Now you are you a structure? Are you a boat? Are you? Do you have a hull? Do you have? So there's other elements to evaluate rather than just propulsion. The very, very limited hole is not mentioned. The, the very limited places, as I go through that yacht basin in my head, I mean there are places, but there's very limited places that, that could take place. Every size. I mean you can't go in front of someone's uh, home that you don't own a slip. You've got to go to Cama to get a slip if you don't already have a slip, and if you have a slip, that means you have the property in front of it person allowed to get a slip from let's say you're looking at canal drive looking west into the yacht basin if i want to ask for a camera permit a town permit and camera approval to build a pier looking west into the yacht basin the only person that can request that is the, the, is the entity that owns the home correct or the property well if you purchase say a boat slip or rent a boat slip in an existing marina mm -hmm. and you want to bring in a floating home well that's as, HOA. And as long as those HOAs don't prohibit it, then you could do it. If Cama says it's okay, and if the town does say it's okay. But I'm saying the only person that can request a, all of those uh, slips to have some type of uh, association, because whether they're deeded, licensed, or certi cer certificate, most of them have. I mean, that's yeah. very few. But Depending on what type of I, if, I if I live on a single family residence there. on uh, the out base, I am the only one that can re request a pier or boat slip in, uh, directly into the water from my property, right? There, they would only be allowed in marinas. So if it's a private boat slip, they would not be allowed. What would not? Cama only allows them in a in a marina that has a pump out. Who you talking? Oh, so Cama's already saying. Okay. You couldn't do it in front of your house. You could not do it in front of your house. And, and you cannot have liveaboards in front of your house. So you can have liveaboards by Carolina Beach regulations at a marina. But if you live off of Canal Drive and you're a single family home, you can't Airbnb up your boat out in your backyard. You couldn't have liveaboards. So that was kind of part of my earlier question, but we never got down this far. Did you just say you can't Airbnb your boat? Not at your private residence. You can at a marina that has a proper uh, sewage treatment. Um, I'm going to get this moving so we can move along. And a boat may be deemed a floating structure when its means of propulsion. This is in the floating structure definition. A boat may be deemed the last sentence. The boat may be deemed a floating structure. A boat may be deemed a floating structure when its means of propulsion has been removed or rendered inoperative, and it contains at least 200 square feet of living space area. I think that's a very dangerous line in this definition because now you're taking a boat and calling it a floating structure. If, it could, if it's no longer operable. If, if it's no longer operable. So the motor blew and they're, you know, they're living on it. Um, in other areas, you can paddle and that's okay. Commissioner. The, the definers just get confusing. The definitions get confusing. I think that it was intent was now that that boat is really converted it's no longer being used as a boat it's just living live, used as living I understand boards. the intent but do you think there's some living boards that might fall under that that a neighbor might not like them living there in their boat would a time frame addition to that uh and repeated you know deterioration of equipment or something if you said 30 days without means of propulsion and you know could not be inoperable more than twice in a calendar year or something that such that it's not just an immediately boat to floating structure, but I, I think there's a whole lot of areas that more clarity. And, and that does expand it to the, the type of situation. So if the commission would like to strike that last sentence, I mean, that's something reasonable as well. Strike the whole thing. 
I'm open for anybody to make a motion. And let's have a discussion on it and have a vote. If anybody's ready to make a motion, I'm not ready to or if anybody wants to give a directive to go back to the, to the drawing board for these guys and let them well, make I mean, it more clear for us. Of, I hate to give them a bunch of uh, a, a bunch of <laughs> would you look at this when it's if nobody's gonna if we're not gonna if, I mean they got plenty to do if nobody's gonna. Well, either way, it's going to go to them, and they've got to make a decision. It's going to go to who? It's not going to go to council unless we make a vote. It's not look, no. But if we make a motion, like if, I just. If we I think the current, it's, it needs to be more defined. It definitely needs to be more defined. And I think if we could send it to them with some more def define or strikeouts and let them handle it from there, let them make the f decision on what. Them being council. the town council. Well, before we, uh, that's a good, that's a good point. Maybe, uh, as I was mentioning earlier, I don't know what, where the direction went. We talked about a, a tree ordinance and essentially we started looking at it because someone, uh, council said, I'd like, we'd like, or I, or we would like P and Z to look at it. Is, is it appropriate to ask council if we should, uh, go down uh, this trail or if it's something they that they have no interest in voting on I'm gonna say this in in it's my last meeting so I think it would be a derelict of our duty to not either send it back to, to them or to make a vote on it right now I if we are the planning the and zoning exactly board, it's we're, our job. We're recommending we're right. a recommending board for council so I think we have to go one way or the other we have to we either need to have <laughs> one way or the other one send staff, it back to staff staff re or make a vote it or we vote on it and send it to council it yep. has to be one or the other so what are we sending it back to staff for that we're for to this or against more, more clarity more, more teeth, clarity more, more definition well, let, well then let's back up and maybe it's gonna take a lot longer than I thought because are we for or against these things now, we go, we got to go back to the very beginning. This was done under the premise that we didn't want floating, floating so the, structures. The, the, my argument to that would be we are against it currently in our town. And we found, to Mr. Hogan's uh, uh, comment, we found that these people found a, a, a loophole to get around it, and the town's trying to close that loophole because the ordinance already reads no floating structures. Well, yes. The ordinance that's does, that's the and so structure. as well okay, as the land if, use. Plan. If I can, if I can finish, I yes. think I understood uh, Mr. Hardison to say that it was from it was a holdover from 1997 in the land use in plan. In land use, but it's still in our ordinance. I, let me finish. Now, the latest land use plan that we spent two years on, and it wasn't a point of contention. There's nothing in that about the new land use plan, correct? So. Is it re really derelict if we're not undertaking something that we just spent two years on something, planning, went through planning and zoning, went through the LUP, and was now approved by council, and before uh, uh, CRC approves that, we already want to change the land use plan, which I we have, ultimately would have to No, do. I have an answer for you. <laughs> every ordinance doesn't have to be in the land use plan. And every ordinance is not in the land use plan. And just because it was in the land use plan previously and it's not in there now doesn't mean we can't keep the ordinance that says we don't want floating structures. Because the ordinance is still there regardless of what the land use there, plan right? says. I know, we're not changing but we're, the land use plan. I know we're not changing the land use plan. I think maybe I didn't articulate my point well enough. Something that was left out of the current land use plan that we're operating under, which prohibits we would go look at for this was left out of this most, most current one. You have to consider that whether you agree with me or not, or maybe it shouldn't have been left out. You have to consider that it was in there since 1997 and now in 2020 it's out. You got to think about it. But you were at all those meetings, and I mean that was never even brought up. So, and I don't know why it wasn't brought and, up. And that rein, that, that, reinf that reinforces anymore. my point. No, it's not. It's not argumentative. I'm not for or against this. I don't live on the water, and it's not going to. But I just want to be fair. It's been there since '97. That's a heck of a long time. And this time it fell out. Nobody, the consultant, nor town staff, or anybody in town, or anybody on P and Z, ever brought it up. Jeremy, do, now you, just do you have all that? Do you my, have any my, reason why that would have not been brought up during this land use plan? I just, it wasn't recognized as a, as a community issue. It just okay. I, my point about the, my, point. the my point about derelict of duty is we have to send it back to staff 
or send it to council. That's our two options. We can't just say, okay, we're not doing anything. Uh, there's a third option we could vote on and take to vote take no action because this looks like this is crap. I am against that. Pardon? I'm against. Well, you that. might. Well, you might be against it. Okay. But that, make but a that motion. Do, but that doesn't make. make it's wrong make to say, as uh, Mr. Hardison just said, we didn't see it as a community issue. Now, because it's been brought up and there's no representation for somebody that says it's a community issue. Now all of a sudden it becomes our issue. Now I know we spent a long time on this, but we can spend hours more talking about it. I don't, I don't care. I'm here for the long haul. It's my last meeting. Okay. But if you but if you want to make a motion that says but we take no action, I'm not passionate Mr. either Rouse, way. I'm, I'm just more passionate about what let's if, if we do or don't do something. Why did we actually do it? And I don't I don't I don't have a. Well, that's I think where they we're brought, at. but that's what I'm saying. They brought it to us because it is against our ordinance without they got through it with a loophole and they're trying to figure out how to either open it up all the way and let everybody do it or close the loophole because it is against our current ordinance is what I'm hearing from Jeremy exactly we're trying I don't think we're trying to recreate the, the wheel we're just trying to figure out whether we want to open this thing up to everyone and get rid of the you know just leave it exactly as it is or but but basically the the, the thing when I read it I just read no floating structures we all agree it's not a boat but through a loophole they were able to to get through and i think they're just trying to have some clarity because it is against the ordinance and we and, and they want zoning to fix it and make a recommendation that's what i hear i, I hear what you're saying totally i don't disagree but i don't think it's derelict of duty to make an i don't disagree but i don't believe it's dereliction of duty to I make, make something i know i did and I, and I do. But I don't believe it's dereliction of duty not to jump on everything that comes down the pipe when it's clearly not been a community issue and it's pretty much been a fight between two property owners. And I do not have a side on this either way. So uh, a motion of no action, town does nothing, nobody does anything, it goes away. That's what that says. And I think that's the derelict of duty here, that there's clearly a, a problem with the ordinance and we're either going to address it and say we want to not allow it and keep it like it was and make those changes but define it better than what it's been defined right here or we're going to say no we want to allow floating structures or we're going to send it back to staff and say hey if you clarify this and clarify that and maybe do some more research on what can what is considered a floating structure to clarify that for us then it'd be easier for us to make a recommendation that's what i mean or we can make a motion to approve it I believe it would be the just floor's like, open for motions. I believe it would be just as reckless to jump on an issue that has no one here uh, requesting it. And you know, the town did a good job in writing this up and presenting it, but I don't see anybody for or against it out here. That's my point. Well, I think staff the town staff staff yeah. feels there's an issue, and that's why they're bringing it to to us is because there needs to be some in the ordinance that it's on the books that they got drug over the cult I mean they really it, it was a hot topic and th and that's not that yeah and there's just definitely not their job to be in the middle of that either so and I think so that's why they're bringing need. it to some to a group that actually can make take a step forward to help get it to council and then ultimately we don't make the decision anyway I'm quite aware I'm just not sure why it's here yeah so it, it would need to be addressed in the zoning is what we we're told by the attorney now whether you want to prohibit it or allow it that's up to the town uh, what you have before you is to prohibit it um, that's kind of my point we're, we're not looking at whether to do it or not we're looking at something that was written to prohibit it and then the long lengthy conversation about the LUP and don't get me wrong I'm not saying I'm for or against it I'm just saying the process to me seems could be argued if you looked at it on the other side and we have nobody out here making a case for it either way I'd say it is prohibited now and that isn't really the question before it is not the question isn't should we allow it or that's not the question defining the question it is, does this language help clarify the rule that's on the and I don't yes. think it does. I don't think it does it a boat? so to me the logical movement for us is to say try again uh, do we need to make a motion to do that? Yeah. It, and let me just ask, if you have a definition of floating home now, so if it just said means a structure built on a floating platform. Period. 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 
a house. That's the current ordinance. But it has the means, the, the means of propulsion. And the means of propulsion is out how it is the just, loophole. No, I'm reading that up there. That's the current. I don't know. I guess. And the means of propulsion. I guess if I was making a motion, I'd just say to. I'm against this change because I don't think it helps. So what's the point? Don't make the change. If I was going to make a go motion, I would ask. Right. So if I, would, you I would ask out. them to go back and define it a little bit better, get some more clarification, maybe ask about some of the things Commissioner Hogan brought up about the plaque that, the, that a boat gets so that you can more define what a boat versus a floating structure is. Or simply, a floating house means a house, a floating platform, period. Sh strike without a means of propulsion. Because so that's the loophole so, is so, the two so, outboard motors. Is so the houseboats that I grew up on that were a house sitting on a hole with propulsion would not be allowed here. Under they are already. No, but they were built they on are. a hole, Keith. They're not built on a it floating say dock. About that. And I don't think a that platform? It doesn't. You can I think do, you need you more clarification. Multiple definitions that I can apply. Right. And even if you take that out and you can say, you're a, flat, you know, you're a floating home because of this, I can turn around and say, no, I'm a boat because of that. So right. That, right. Taking that off doesn't right. fix anything. But that's, that's that, why those I would, two I would, words are the loophole that was used that was used for this particular that particular case. case. Yes. I would make a motion that would ask staff to come back with more information, more clarity for you guys, because I won't be here, so that you can have a better way. Because obviously none of us are on the same page here. None of us. And I don't think anybody's for or against any of them. I don't think so either. Yeah. I agree with you on that point. But in, unless we send it back to get more, gather more information, we're never going to get it clarified and, 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 and taken up correctly. I, I personally think that the new language doesn't go far enough and can be misconstrued just like this sentence right here. My point exactly. I, I'm for keeping the ordinance as it is unless somebody yeah, asks to change it. Exactly. If somebody comes along and says, I want to change the floating structure ordinance, that's a whole different topic. But to, to change it, the just definitions, let's make the definitions the best we can. And close the loop. We're not trying to stop. We're not trying to let them happen. We're trying to stop them from happening. So I just think that the definition has too many areas of question. Too gray. It's too, too gray. gray. If that makes sense, Jeremy. Yeah, if that's the direction, we will go back to the drawing board and see if we can come up with a definition. That would be my motion if I was going to make one right this second. Well, you should. I make a motion that we uh, ask the staff to go back and look at considering amending Chapter 42, Section 40-72, and Section 40-548 to address floating homes and give us more definition, clarification on what a floating structure is versus what a boat is. Uh, specifically live aboard boats. I second. Is there any discussion or anybody want to add more? All in favor? Aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Thank you. All before the football game. I'm not watching. That was one of the best discussions in, <laughs> in a long time. I mean, I was complaining a little bit, but no, I enjoyed that. Well, there wasn't a right or wrong. No, there wasn't. Yeah. Non-agenda items. But that was, uh, that was fun, guys. Thank you, Jeremy. Very much. I yeah, appreciate it. That's, it's, it's, that's what makes the ordinance it's good. To be. It's, it's it is the way it's supposed to be. So that's what makes the ordinance good, is that it's vintage. Yeah. Right. I, I, I enjoyed that more than anything we've done in quite some time. Not agenda items? Oh, well, Commissioner Rouse, just look forward to the table of permissible uses then. Uh, <laughs> Commissioner, I just have one. Uh, yes, sir. Just, just to keep your, just the, the commission, on in October, we will need to appoint uh, chairman and a co-chair, so just be thinking about that. Can we vote now? Just kidding, just kidding. I would, I would wait till we have a full board of yeah. current members. Uh, you, know, you mean the new ones? Yeah. I got you. I want to thank everybody. Jeremy, I, you're the only original person still on this that since I started, and Ed, who's here sometimes. Um, but I really appreciate everybody. I look forward to seeing what you guys have to do, and, and I think there's a good group of people here. Um, it's been a real great learning experience, and I've enjoyed being a part of sculpting what happens in this town, and I'm going to get on with life and the foundation.
I got lots my of three businesses and, and uh, move along. So I really appreciate everybody, and I've enjoyed my time here. Thank you. Mr. Hoffer, same to you. I second that motion. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I am still going to uh, – look, I, this has been too much, but I'm still actively pursuing uh, my bike to pedestrian goal. You keep going. Keep pushing, Mike. And I guess my request to you guys is back me up. Unfortunately, every you know, a lot that we try to pursue just gets stuck in the mud. People pushing on their and is it members, is it funding issues? Council members pushing on staff, things just sort of don't happen. So, so reach out, support. reach out to us when you need that kind of help. Yes, I'm happy to help. Uh, you know, smash people on Facebook and stuff. I'm yeah, good at that. Keith, you vocal? <laughs> That's I just I can't even I, I don't even think of that word for you vocal. <laughs> It's been an honor serving with uh, you, Mr. Hoffer and Mr. Blumendahl, thank and uh, thank you very much for what you've done, what I've learned from you, and I look forward to a continuing our friendships. Yes, I consider everybody up here a friend, and, and as well as Miles and Jeremy and Andrea. All right, I make a motion we adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.